contrary to popular belief, probably, amortization schedules are not based on payments. They're divided into payments, but they're actually based on predetermined balance points to get from 200,000 to 195 or 190 or whatever it may be. It just so happens it takes a certain number of payments to get to that point. But if you threw that dollar amount at it tomorrow to that balance point, that predetermined balance point in the future, you eliminate all those payments for principal interest leading up to that point. So again, we could show you all day long. People say, well, how could you borrow money at you know 12% to pay off something at six? Because mm -hmm. six ain't six and 12 ain't 12. Because it's all about how the interest is calculated, how the finance charges are assessed, how and when the payments are applied that determine. So that's where interest cancellation comes into play. Uh, it's not just strategic payoff, right. knowing what to pay optimally and efficiently when. It's part of it. It's not just interest float, taking advantage of the ability to leverage OPM or other people's money efficiently during the period of time that's pre-prescribed. It's part right. of it. It's not just interest accumulation, which yes, there are opportunities for that now, as you alluded to. It could be a money market. It could be three, four, five percent savings. But it's also probably most important and most or least understood interest cancellation. How do we leverage the use of our money to bank like a bank, to leverage every dollar you have, every day you have it until you spend it, to use it to cancel interest you otherwise would have been assessed? Because the less interest you pay, the lower that volume is, the more you reduce that effective interest rate, the more money can go to principal, and therefore you can build equity faster and pay the debt down faster, et cetera. Hope that helps. My goodness, <laughs> that 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 was a, an excellent uh, explanation, very clear. So what I wanted to know as well, because we have a lot of people, uh, shout out to Dave Ramsey, who has built a platform on making sure that people are tracking uh, their their finances, right? Sure. But there are people who find it difficult. They find it difficult to track their spending, uh, to track their budgeting. I don't like that word. I, I like money allocation plan, um, mm -hmm. mapping. Uh, so to do you mm -hmm. find finding it difficult to track and to have that money allocation plan with their their current banking system, how they usually do banking, right? Okay. What what would be a solution? to that if they are having trouble tracking, if you're having trouble budgeting, if you're having these, these difficulties, these challenges um, with your current banking system, is that something that you're just going to need to get good at? Um, or is there something that that automated uh, velocity banking solution can help them out with? Got it. Because I, well, I don't know about you, man, but I, I know that difficulty you know, when it's difficult, my brain tends to do this number. Uh, you're let not me, let me go I'm somewhere pretty, else. <laughs> I'm pretty right. sure there's something fundamentally common to the human experience. So I'd say a couple of <laughs> things about that. First, uh, just to piggyback on your first statement. Um, first, I, I, I've, I've met Dave a couple of times. Uh, we've had uh, a meal together. I've, I've done an interview with him. And and uh, I, I may not subscribe uh, respectfully fully to his ideology. Not that fundamentally there are not some valuable things there. I will certainly acknowledge that there is. Uh, but to to disavow that for all the negatives that come with technology, like, do I wish my 14-year-old daughter was on social media? No, I do not. Okay, there's plenty of negatives that are unknown that we're probably just now seeing with a lot of technology. But also, we're not going backwards. And whether we like it or not, it wasn't that that long ago where your only way to get on, around town was a horse and buggy. Now... I still like a horse and buggy. If I'm traveling somewhere and it's a very, you know, ambionic experience, great, cool. You're taking a little horse and buggy. It's cool. But it's not going to get me somewhere faster than my car on the highway, right? So it's all a matter. And a compass is a useful tool if you're lost in the woods. And maps are great. But I don't think there's anybody listening to this or watching this right now that is going to throw their GPS out the window and go back to using a paper map. Because GPS is a digitized version of a map incorporating the, ge the geometry into it, yet it, it uses technology for navigation. Nobody's going to go backwards. So again, I really uh, acknowledge him for the fact that he brings more awareness to getting out of debt. I'm going to give anybody credit for that. On the other hand, turning a blind eye to the fact that 
we actually have now technology that we can use to increase the opportunity and the likelihood that people using certain ideologies can be successful is the name of the game. You know, we all have calendars probably. I still a little old school as far as writing things down. We've all got reminders on our phones now too. We're not going away with that. You know, it's not Morris code. It's nice that we don't use walkie talkies. I had a pager way back in the day. It's pretty proud of it too, by the way. And I used to actually page myself and go, it found me in the garage. It found me in the living room. Well, nobody's going back to paging now, unless you're in a hospital and there's a, we're using phones. Okay. So the whole point is I acknowledge it, but you're right. Things have advanced to a manner in which we are going to revolutionize the way that people actually not just manage their money, not just budget their finances, but become better stewards of their finances because they now have access to technology that gives them the ability to level the playing field with the financial institutions. There was a time not that long ago, GPS has been around for a long time, but it was only privatized for use in the military up until 30, 40 years ago. There was jet fighters that could read a quarter on the ground from a thousand feet in the air. But when we finally got GPS, it was, okay, you can get the spot within a hundred feet. And then of course, now we can get it within, you know, it's actually three to five feet. But the point Mm -hmm. is it's not inches. Well, guess what? Now, a lot of these systems and these strategies that banks and financial institutions are using for decades, CJ, we can now incorporate into a technology-based platform that works just like GPS for money. But there is one more element here, though. There's the psychology of it. Humans in nature, Americans, I think, in particular, struggle. What do we always say the two top New Year's resolutions are every, every year? Fitness and finance. Fitness. Lose weight, get in shape, get out of debt and save money. Mm-hmm. Well, why? Yeah. You think eat less, exercise more. Simple. Right. Spend less, save more. Simple. Simple. But it's not that easy. And it's not just because we don't have discipline. That's part of it. It's not just because we're not consistent. That's definitely part of it. But they're the same two every year, CJ, because A, they remain important priorities in life. But number two, because we continue to fail. And yes, we could say that, you know, people don't plan to fail. They fail to plan and lack of motive. That's all true. What we also know is that when you see something that's a big enough benefit, and it's reachable enough, we'll do almost anything as humans. So the problem is when we live in this opaque sea and we associate eating with pleasure and dieting with pain and spending with pleasure, why it's called retail therapy, and Mm -hmm. saving with pain, if that's our belief system, then what happens every single time we have a stressful day or the kid is crying and we're fighting with our wife? We're gonna go right back to that thing that brings us pleasure, which is gonna be about every other Tuesday. So then we wonder why we continue to, you know, indulge in bomb bombs or spend money on stuff we don't need with money we don't have to impress people we probably don't even know. It's psychology. But here's the point. The the way in which we've created this technology becomes predictive, becomes dynamic. And here's the important point. It actually becomes a behavioral modification process because the reality is, and I've said this before, if this was a magic fork, I know it's not. But, and if I ever figure this out, CJ, I love you, but we won't know each other anymore because you're going to call me, but it's going to be long distance. I'm going to be on an island somewhere. Okay. <laughs> but if I have this magic fork and every single time I took a bite of food, it would tell me exactly how many calories that bite of food was. And then I could turn it around on the backside. It would show me a picture of exactly what I'm going to look like 90 days from now, if I continue to eat that way. Now I might like that chocolate cake and I might have one piece, but I'm not going to have five. Because in real time, I'm given the ability to have some foresight into exactly the impact of what I just did 30 seconds ago. Imagine if we could do that for money. Imagine if you could know five or 10 years from now, the consequences of what you did right now. Because in GPS, it works that way, right? If you miss your turn when it says turn right in 200 feet and you don't do it, what does the system do? Congratulations, CJ. You just added 6.3 minutes and 4.1 miles to your destination. What if we could do that to money? Because guess what? The number one flaw in traditional financial planning, and I know I've done it, I own this responsibility, is that we act like, even though we know it's not true, we act like everybody's income is going to stay exactly the same no matter what. And all the expenses are going to stay the same. And we'll do a financial update once a year. Do you know how often finances change in the average family? 
every other week mm. because the car broke down. We That's need right. a new refrigerator. The kid needs braces. And so even if you're a salaried employee, you could get laid off. Your income could drop. You could get a bonus. You get some sort of other tax refund. But you know what really changed all the time? Expenses. Not just because of cost of living. Not just because of inflation. Because right. life happens. Tragedies yeah. happen. Unexpected things happen. Yeah. So how do we adjust to that? We figure it out with your car. Right. GPS doesn't care who's driving. Doesn't care where you're going. And doesn't care what vehicle you have. You could be walking. You could take a bus. You could take... It doesn't care. Its focus is how do I get you to the quickest point to your destination? What if we could do that financially? What if we could do that for the average family's finances? And we could say in real time, you're able to understand the impact of what you may or may not do instantly. And now you know the long-term impact of exactly what's going to happen, how it's going to change your ETA, or in this case, your estimated time of getting out of debt or being financially free. Just imagine the power of what that could do. And that's really what we've been able to create to create, to actually level the playing field and let the average person bank like a bank at the push of a button. Wow. So, you know, this, this, all this sounds too good to be true, but <laughs> I got the system. I know it's true. There are people listening to us right now. They know it's true. And what we're wondering is once you have the financial tools and, and the resources, right? Mm -hmm. Once we have those financial tools and the resources, okay, fine, right? That, that's good. We got it. We, we, we're, we're now on our way. But what if we lack access to the financial tools and resources that would make it possible for us to look at what the action today will cost us a year from now, two years from now, three years mm -hmm. from now. Mm -hmm. How do we get access to that to help us reach our financial goals? Freedom, financial freedom. 